On today's episode of Watch Jergo, I'm here to tell you a story about the worst car buying mistake I have ever made. And it's not, it is definitely not my BMW i8. That might be an iffy EV, but it is definitely not a mistake. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo, and today I am here to tell you again about my 1996 Selectria Force, the factory electric converted Geo Metro that I probably should have never bought. There's a car that we haven't mentioned and hasn't been moved in quite some time. This is my 1996 Selectria Force, which is originally a Geo Metro that was factory electric converted and it's full of deep cycle lead acid batteries. Yes, the same batteries you'd use in your boat, uh, maybe a car, really whatever you want, systems, things like that. Anywhere you need a battery, you can fully discharge. It just has a bunch of 12 volt batteries in it, and they're all stacked up to create a 160 volt system that lets you drive this car around. Now, when I saw this thing come up for sale, I thought, wow, this will be a game changer for the channel. It's something that has really never been seen before on YouTube. No one's gone in depth with this car. So I bought it, and here I was when I bought this car thinking, no one has one of these, the demand must be crazy, the seller's inbox must be blowing up. So I just said, I'll take it, hold it for me, I'll pay the ransom, <laughs> you know. I didn't care what it cost at the time, I just wanted to make sure that I ended up with this car. And now I realize nobody's inbox blows up when you're trying to sell an electric Geo Metro. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You get like one message a month. And that is why this car has been sitting in my driveway with me periodically going out to plug it back in so we can recharge it, because it never shuts off, just to keep it alive until somebody finally buys this car. So, I have massive buyer's regret at this point. It is one of the coolest cars I think I've ever owned. We've talked about this at length. I love insanely rare stuff that nobody else has, but that insanely rare stuff that's normal is a double-edged sword. It's not insanely rare stuff like a Ferrari. It's insanely rare stuff that nobody wanted because nobody wanted it. And I was just massively mistaken when I went in to buy this thing. At this point, the car's been sitting so long, I think the tires are getting a little bit low. So we're gonna run around, air all of those up now that we've got it back in the shop, clean it up real quick and relist it again, hoping that I will get it sold in the near future. So uh, let's jump right in and start getting this thing ready to go again. And actually let's take it out for a drive too. Let's go put some miles on it so we can exercise the batteries and then get it back on the charger and get this thing back in tip top shape. Uh, obviously you don't wanna let electric cars sit too much. That's why I keep plugging this thing back in to keep the batteries around 80% while it sits. And like I mentioned, the car doesn't ever shut off. It doesn't have a 12 volt battery from what I can tell. So the DC to DC converter is literally always on. I think you can always hear it too. I think there's a little bit of a hum coming from it. So if we listen really closely under the hood, I think we would hear that DC DC sitting in there converting the 160 volt DC down to 12 volts to make sure the thing never shuts off because things like the gauges and the amp meter in the cluster, they never shut off. They're just always running. And because of that, the car is always dying a little bit. It's not like new EVs, they know how to shut those off. If you wanna learn more about this Electria Force, I've already made a bunch of videos about the car, so go check out those videos. They've got a lot more information, but basically this thing is front wheel drive, just like a Geo Metro. It's got a big old motor in the front, a giant forklift motor basically. It's got a DC motor to run the air conditioning that we fixed, we rebuilt that motor. It's belt driving the AC compressor, just a normal AC compressor. And for the most part, it's a very simple rudimentary EV from way before EVs were mainstream. And a lot of these things were sold to the government, including this one, which you can just see the outline of TVA right there in the door. I know it's pretty hard to see, but this came from the Tennessee Valley Authority. As always, the government spends the money on EVs first. Whether you wanted them to or not, government's gonna government. That's all I can say about that. We also put in a Toto in this thing, which has a backup camera now and wireless CarPlay. It is actually pretty cool to drive. And with that said, we've got it charged. It is just under full right now. 
and we'll plug it back in and charge it a little bit more tonight. But first, let's take this thing out for a drive and remember what this Electra is like. And one thing I should mention, for being an EV, the car of the future, there's no power options. There's no power windows, there's no power locks. Uh, there's really nothing here but turn signals, lights, and that big old selector that lets you put it in gear. So let's get it out on the road and have some fun with the Selectria. It's been a long time. They did cover up almost every single Geo logo on this car, but they left the steering wheel. It's got that nice big Geo globe right there in the middle. All right, let's go. We'll get back to the Selectria Force in just a moment, but first I need to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, and if you don't know what a VPN is, it's basically an encrypted tunnel that protects your privacy and safety while you're online. Without a VPN, your information might be sent in plain text. With a VPN, that information is sent through an encrypted tunnel, and that will protect you from eavesdroppers that might try to steal your identity, really any information that you type into an unencrypted form. But Surfshark does so much more than that. You can travel the world virtually. A VPN will let you change your IP address to a different country with just a click of a button. And that can have a bunch of advantages like unblocking content on some streaming platforms that maybe you can't access in the country you're in currently. It protects you on public Wi-Fi, which is a huge thing for me. When I'm out picking up cars like this, I can flip on the Surfshark VPN with just a click of one button and know that my data is protected no matter what network I'm connecting to, which lets me send and receive files securely and Surfshark has a bunch of other benefits. So get Surfshark today and start protecting yourself online at https colon slash slash surfshark dot deals slash jr and enter promo code jr for an extra 83% off an exclusive offer and three extra months free. I'll throw a link in the description below. Huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video and being a continued supporter of automotive creators like me. Now, back to the Selectria. All right, having the backup camera on this thing is absolutely epic. First, because it's a really high resolution backup camera. And I also have it set up to be like a top-down view, even though the top-down view never quite wanted to calibrate right. It still kind of shows up like it works, which is pretty sweet. Anyway, let's get the Selectria out on the road. <laughs> Future sounds! You know, I almost forgot how much work I put into this thing. It was quite a bit what we aligned it like twice to make sure the steering wheel ended up perfect. Uh, of course, rebuilding that motor for the AC compressor, putting this head unit in, replacing all the window uh, cranks, just kind of everything went into the old Selectria tie rod ends. Man. I really forget all the work that I do until uh, I go back and drive the car. Like, it drives pretty well. All right, wide open throttle pull. We were wide open throttle the whole time. I bet you guys couldn't tell. 35, blisteringly fast. You know, we've never topped this thing out. Not even once. And I guess the batteries are kind of up to temp. There's 55, still wide open. If this light changes, we'll never make it. Oh, we're doing good. All right, there's 60, still wide open. Let's get into performance driving mode here. Oh, we're doing good, 65. People always ask me how fast it goes. And I always say, nobody knows. We got 65, we're climbing, but we're kind of blowing through battery here. We've gone through uh, three amp hours so far. Uh, climbing a hill, so we've stopped accelerating. Now we're maintaining 65. What is this, a tow truck? I always plan to get my draggy out and make some pulls with this car, but I never got a chance to do it because the draggy is in my, uh, my big toolbox, which I haven't seen in a long time. I haven't been over there. So I never did go get the draggy, so we never got to get zero to 60 times, but you know, I guess it's pretty slow. What if we just use a stopwatch? Look at it pulling on this car beside me. Oh, it's so fast. <laughs> oh, it's such an entertaining car to drive because I, what else is there? Like it's not fast. It just makes interesting noises. And, and it is a Geo Metro at the end of the day, but we can probably get a lot of region out of it. It's really cool seeing the region work in real time, right in front of your face. This test is slightly uphill. 
So it's definitely kind of cheating the car out of some performance. There's like at least a 2% grade here. But I'll turn the corner, stop, and we'll floor it. Okay, here we go. Full stop, go. I hit start and floored it at the same time. 15, baby. We're wide open. We're making big pulls. I just have to keep talking because it's so slow, honestly. But there's 40. Slight uphill. We're in the uphill section right now. 45. It might have helped if I had that little bit of extra charge. Just that last little percentage. There's 55. It's been 31 seconds. And 60. 45 seconds to 60. Yeah! We don't need a drag you for that. I'd say that's plenty of precision for 45 seconds to 60. Woo! She is not quick in the slightest. Now we know just how fast the Selectria Force is. It will go 65. We know that much. It does not want to go much faster climbing up hills. And it will also take 45 seconds to get to 60. So, performance off the charts. And a lot of people use off the charts as like an adjective to describe something being really cool. I'm using off the charts uh, because if this was a paper graph, we definitely would have ran out of paper before we got to 60. It took a long time. It turns in like really well for some reason. Why does it, but it's also like really sloppy at the same time. It turns in really well and then it rolls back and forth. There's just body roll for years. I don't know, it still drives fine. It's a commuter car. It's exactly what you'd expect from an old Geo Metro with CarPlay. All right guys, this car is hilarious. The AC blowing cold right now. The system works great. CarPlay in this 1996 Geo. Ah, it's, I'm still never gonna drive it again, but it's really great. So that is the Selectria Force, a car I absolutely regret buying now that I thought would have an insane market. I was sure people would jump all over buying this thing. First, because it's cheap, I would nearly take what I paid for it. I'm already down to $4,500, which is what I've got in it, but I'm basically giving the car away. It runs and drives perfectly. Everything is sorted out. Really, the only thing it could use at this point is a good buff could cut this back, get all the oxidation off the paint and it would look brand new again. And it's a driver, it is ready to hit the road. And I guess people don't see it that way. People only see it as a Geo Metro, which leaves me with offers like $1,000, which I absolutely am not gonna take. One of the nicest 1996 cars out there. So I made a mistake. I won't be buying a car this rare ever again, but I'm still kind of glad I did it. It is a really cool car. Before we wrap this video up, I do want to mention that Aging Wheels does know about this car and has said that he has no room for it. We have talked about it more than enough. Uh, obviously, everybody loves the idea of the car, but most people don't have room for more old EVs around their houses. I've also talked to some museums about donating the car to them, but I'd really just rather sell the car than deal with shipping it or you know, figuring out how to make the tax advantage work and all that stuff. It's not something I've done. It's not something I really wanna do. I'd rather just sell the car to somebody that wants a nice little daily commuter. Unfortunately, like we said, when you're going to sell these rare special cars, some people don't see the value and they are very hard to sell. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjrgo.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time. Well, back to the driveway you go, Selectria, where it will sit until it sells. Unfortunately, it's already been here for almost six months, which is way, way too long for a car that I'll probably never drive again. Let's be honest, I have really good cars that I typically drive before I take this out.